Hi, this is Gary with MacMOS Now. On today's episode, let's look forward to iOS 7. So iOS 7 is the next version of the operating system that runs on the iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. And it's going to have a whole new look. Now, it's going completely away from the look that it's had in all previous versions dating back to 2007. It has a more flat look now. The icons are all going to be different for all the primary pre-installed apps. And each of the apps inside them is going to have this flatter look too with less skeuomorphism uh, having it look like some sort of real world object. It will just be a lot of white screens with lots of data and hopefully it will be very easy to read and navigate. One interface change that we're going to see is something called Control Center. And this is going to come up from the bottom of the screen. We have this now where you kind of look in your Recents list at the bottom and go over to the left and see some controls. But now these controls can come up and you have a lot more controls there uh, to be able to access uh, what's currently playing, uh, music for instance, uh, brightness controls, things like that uh, on your iPhone. We're also going to have a new way that you switch between apps. It's going to be a different app switching screen that shows you a preview of what's going on in that app and allows you to flip through the different screens to jump to an app. And it's also going to come with some better multitasking functionality that is going to be able to handle different apps running in the background better than it does now. Some changes to some of the apps will be more than cosmetic. For instance, the Photos app will have a new way to organize your photos as you look through them. You can group them together by uh, the date you took them or location. And also in the Camera app you're going to have a new uh, square photo mode and also the ability to apply filters while you're taking photos. A big new feature is going to be the addition of AirDrop to iOS. This will allow you to send files to other devices that are nearby directly communicating from device to device, not requiring that to be on the same Wi-Fi network or even the same cellular network or connected to any network at all. The devices will be able to see each other. This is called uh, Wi-Fi sideband, being able to use the Wi-Fi capabilities of these devices to be able to go and see each other rather than seeing a primary network. The upshot of which will be that when you're standing there next to somebody who has an iOS device and you want to send them something like a photo, you can do it. You don't have to go and both log into a Wi-Fi network or ask them their email address or anything like that. You'll just be able to see them, send it to them, they accept it, and now they've got it. Siri will get an upgrade with a new voice that sounds more human and also some new services like being able to access data in Wikipedia, uh, do searches on Twitter, and even access some data in the Bing search engine. iCloud Keychain is something I talked about in the last episode. Macs will be able to use this to enter in passwords and other information like credit card numbers into forms in Safari. And you'll be able to use this on the iPhone and iPad as well using iCloud Keychain and they should sync across. Now this is going to have a big advantage over third party solutions like OnePassword which can't really do this on iOS because each app stands on its own. iOS 7 also promises better car integration but you have to have a car that's compatible with it. So only new cars, probably next year's models or even the year after that, and probably only some models by some manufacturers will be compatible with this. But if you are lucky enough to have the right car, you'll be able to see your iPhone screen or at least portions of it on your car screen. So you can use Siri and your car screen to control things going on in your iPhone rather than having to actually pick up and look at the device. So we already have with Find My iPhone the ability to track your phone, to be able to lock it and even be able to wipe it remotely if somebody steals it. But iOS 7 will take that a step further because it's going to make it very difficult for somebody to wipe your phone. Matter of fact, wiping it normally should still give you control over it and they shouldn't be able to activate it as a new phone unless they know the old phone's password. We're going to have to see how this plays out. I'm sure some hackers will figure some way to really wipe the iPhone, but it's going to make it much more difficult. And also it might make it more difficult to resell your iPhone because you're going to have to completely wipe it and unlock it uh, before you give it to somebody else. You can't leave it all up to them. So Apple is putting the iTunes radio service under new features for iOS. It's going to be for Mac and iOS and even Apple TV as well. And this should be kind of a replacement for Pandora, allowing you to have similar functionality. The difference might be which labels are assigned to which service. So Pandora may have an upper hand at first since they've been around longer. But you should be able to stream music based on just basic criteria like a song that you like or an artist that you like or some preset stations. And then I'm sure this will be tied in nicely with iTunes allowing you to purchase music that you like. 
So how about the details? When will iOS 7 be out? Well Apple says this fall. So late September to late December. But we may see some new iOS devices in that same time frame. New iPhones, uh, new iPads. And if so I'll bet that Apple puts iOS 7 on those pushing forward the release date. Maybe even before Mavericks. So maybe October, November. Whenever they come out with new devices that's when I think we'll actually see it. How much is it going to cost? Well Apple really hasn't been charging anything for iOS updates. In the past they've charged for iPod Touch users only but they've done away with that. So I would expect iOS 7 to be a free upgrade as iOS 6 was. What will it be compatible with? Well they say it's going to be compatible with the iPhone 4 and newer, the iPod Touch 5th Gen or newer, and everything from the iPad 2 on. So everything that can currently run iOS 6 leaving out only the original iPad 1. And lastly, how will you get it? Well, you'll get it through an update, either through iTunes or directly to your iPhone. And we'll all know about it because every Apple site out there, including MacMost.com, will be talking about it when it comes out. Hope you found this useful. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. If you found this video useful there's one thing you can do for me in return. It won't cost you anything and it will just take you a few seconds. If you're not already at MacMost.com go there and then look for the video you just watched. Go to that page. Underneath the video you will see a bunch of different links that help you share the video with friends. Take a second to click the Like button. This sends a signal out to the rest of the Internet that the video is worth watching. Thanks.